Okay. So, uh, we have been discussing about heterogeneous because I would like to give a flavor for heterogeneous reactions. So, that means what extra information what we require for heterogeneous reactions. Abdul, what extra information? Mass transfer step. Mass, tra mass transfer step. But we have taken only isothermal reactions. And if I have non isothermal reactions, it is not only mass transfer, even heat transfer will come into picture. Why? Because in the bulk, you have a different temperature. On the particle, if it is a catalytic reaction, you have another temperature, right? Or in exothermic reaction or endothermic reaction. Endothermic reaction, the temperature of the particle will be less than the temperature in the bulk. If it is exothermic reaction, the temperature in the bulk is less than, yeah, bulk. I changed the argument. So, uh, in the bulk it is less and the at the particle exothermic reaction. So, you have more temperature. So, there is a temperature gradient also between the film and the actual particle, right. So, that heat transfer also you have to take into account, right. So, that we will do in the next semester, but first things you know simple things what we want to understand. We have derived an equation for catalytic reaction, right. Catalytic reaction and you got a rate minus R A equal to uh, C A B by minus uh, divided by 1 by k g and 1 by yeah, 1 by k and we also know that now in uh, under some conditions k that is the reaction rate constant will not come into picture for design at all. It will come only I mean the mass transfer coefficient that will come into picture. That means, my rate equation now contains only mass transfer ra rate, mass transfer coefficient rather than chemical concentration and also chemical reaction rate constant, you see. And that happens most of the time for combustion reactions. Why? High temperature and very high temperature. All combustion reactions are at very high temperature, 600, 700, 800 like that. So, the reaction uh, rate of reaction is very, very fast. So, it is, yeah, whenever you have a rate of reaction very, very fast, which is controlling? mass transfer controls. So, that is why only mass transfer equation will come for the design of a chemical reactor. It is surprising. No? So, that is the beauty in heterogeneous systems. Now, let me take one uh, non catalytic reaction very simple one non catalytic reaction. Yeah. So, before going to non catalytic reaction one more word about catalytic reaction. I have taken when you take step 1 and step 2 and step 3 for catalytic reaction assuming you have porous particle. First step is mass transfer, second step is reaction, third step is uh, yeah, not desorption, mass transfer back through the filling. Desorption means on the surface it comes, all that we club together. So, then I told that for first order we could, uh, first order uh, rate we assumed, then it was very easy for us to eliminate unknown concentration that is CIS, unknown means I cannot measure that concentration. That is why we could get that very simple expression. I can give in the surprise test, sometime I have to start now that test also. Simply that one equal to k c a square, mass transfer step is k, uh, same k g into c a b minus c a s. Now, that is equivalent to k into c a s square, c a s square. The moment I put that c a s square, then you have a quadratic equation, because our idea is to eliminate c a s. So, you have to solve from this quadratic equation c a s and then that C i s afterwards you can substitute in any one mass transfer equation or reaction equation. Totally the rate becomes very, very complicated, but still it will be in terms of k and uh, k g. So, depending on which condition which is rate controlling you can simplify that equation also in terms of only k g or in terms of only k. If you have very, very, very slow reaction the fellow is not uh, you know as I told you you are not hungry at all. You have, you, you have eaten sufficiently, then idlis will be continuously coming throughout and you have the concentration of idlis on that uh, conveyor belt throughout. So, that means, throughout the film you have the same concentration because the rate is not very fast. The particle is not able to convert the molecules that are coming to the surface uh, into products. So, then what happens? The entire surface will be covered by C A B. So, that is why you draw that line you know C A B constant line you know what we have drawn in that right. So, that is the reason why uh, that line and also it is 0 line because on the surface I think Swami or someone was asking me that question if there is no uh, a, a concentration how can it react you know. 
it is not exactly mathematical equivalent of uh, uh, you know cb equal to 0 whatever particles are coming to the surface they are immediately converted at any time when i look at the surface practically there are no yeah there, there, there is no reactant left yeah if it is a zero we are not considering the it is not zero in the mathematical sense right you say minimum ca ca as minimum what is minimum how do i know what is minimum no sir, we are talking about the resistance of the mass transfer step. Yeah. We are not talking about, uh, I mean. Okay, you tell me, I think to understand the same thing, my example. All of you are tremendously hungry. You can uh, eat an elephant also if you can see, That's so much hungry. Okay? Yeah. So then at that time, this is, uh, idlis are continuously coming. Right? And you are able to eat. So then at any time, continuously they are coming. So at any time, can you see any idli on the surface? Idlis are there. Yeah, they are there. But after coming to the surface, they are getting zero. Yeah, this is zero. I have my catalyst particles starting from here. All the people are standing here. Both sides people are standing. Right? I may have conveyor belt before into the kitchen. The moment they touch the surface, the surface is you standing, uh, you know, waiting to take the, uh, I mean, whatever they give. Whatever they give. Forget about Idlis. Okay? So then, the moment it started coming, first person takes like this. Second person, you know, long hand takes like this. <laughs> Third person also pushes the second person and then takes. So what can you see there? You cannot see any concentration of idlis on that left. Similarly, on the surface, you have the molecules just coming and then touching the surface, converted to product. And now, if you see that, what is the concentration of reactant on the surface? Practically zero. That is what is the meaning of that. Okay? You are telling that so the concentration is decreasing like this, then these particles, few particles which are coming to the surface, they are very quickly uh, converted. And the beauty there is now, if you are intelligent, you should be able to supply as much as possible. Okay? As much as possible, so that you will get maximum re uh, rate. Why? Because the particle is capable of reacting or uh, converting the molecules very quickly. Now, if there is a film, then the resistance will come. If you remove the film, so directly you have lots of air that is coming to the surface where rate of reaction is very high. How do you re remove the film? Fluid mechanics will never allow you to remove. Huh? So, the moment you have high flow rate, film thickness will reduce, then the concentration uh, gradient will not fall that much. Okay? That the concentration on the surface, forget about idli. So, the, the concentration on the surface practically nil. Devayan? Uh, sir, because in this case, uh, this idli is moving, I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, What do you say, when, uh, with time, this idli will come and come and come. So, yeah. uh, when that uh, two persons will be standing there, they will be taking it up. Yes. If no persons uh, after them are standing there, so there will be idli concentration will be there, right? I mean, uh, if, because... No, no, the two people are so hungry, any number of idlis they can eat. What do you mean? I think, you know, so hungry, that means the rate of reaction is very, very high. Temperature is 600, 700, 800 degrees centigrade. Okay? So, any, any molecule coming to the surface will be immediately converted to product. And that is why practically, you see that, practically I said, practically you see that on the surface there is no uh, concentration. <laughs> Here also, Idli's example, there may be a piece of Idli left somewhere. You know? <laughs> <laughs> which is which is stuck to the conveyor belt and all that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So like that, there may be one or two molecules, but that won't give you any you know rate of reaction in the sense that you know significant rate of reaction. That's why if you see uh, my notes, I think and I wrote that C A S is ah uh, almost zero. Like this, I put and then put zero. And you are really see, uh, Swami is taking whenever mathematics are required, he won't bother about mathematics. But here mathematics are not required. Okay, CAS is not exactly equal to 0, but it is approximately 0, tends to 0. That means, the moment you have any molecule coming to the surface, it is getting converted to product. So, practically I do not see many molecules of A on the surface. That is what is the meaning of that. Okay? So, that was the example what we have given. So, now non-catalytic reaction, what we take is coal combustion. Again, I am simplifying many things. Yeah. So, coal combustion, you can use again, the moment you have coal combustion, 
what are the various types of reactor used for coal combustion? Fluidation because first of all, yeah, excellent. Fluidation bed is one. Moving okay. Bed. Anything moving else? Moving bed. Ah, moving bed. Who is telling moving bed? Ah, okay, moving bed. Yeah. Still, because that has to come to your mind first. When you say coal combustion, okay, what are the possible? Because in chemical engineering, that is the beauty I am telling you. The beauty part in chemical engineering is we don't have a single solution problem. We have many possibilities, right? So this reaction can be conducted in many many ways. For example, coal combustion. Even catalytic reaction can be conducted in many many types of reactors, right? But all those reactors will be uh, simplified in ideal uh, in ideal reactors wise. Either only those two, either mixed flow or plug flow. If it is continuous system, if it is batch, in a way batch system. So any reactor you bring, okay. What about you? Can't you use uh, rotary kiln for combustion? We can. We can. What about packet bed? What? Yes, we can. Why you? We can definitely. Why? What is the problem? So that's what you know. I, I can put all the uh, coal inside, burn it. But only thing is, it is not. Steady state. We need steady state energy that is coming out of this combustion. But that is not steady state if I take batch, because initially you may have big fire, initially slow fire again. When it catches all the particles catching fire, then it becomes to peak and afterwards it falls. So that kind of situation I may not require. Okay. So that is the reason why for continuous flow only we will go. Yeah, only that or you have any other thing. You have not heard moving grate conveyor, uh, you know, uh, combustors. Moving belt. Okay, on the belt you have the thing. I think the, of course, the material what you are using the, uh, to the to design that belt should not melt. Okay, so even that also continuously it is fed, continuously it is burned. So this will go and then come out, go and come out like a uh, conveyor belt, uh, which is again recycling on its own. That also can be used. So that is why. Uh, but in all the systems, as I told you, for catalytic reactions, I have to pull out a particle to understand what is the phenomena that is happening around the particle, why the reaction is taking place, how the reaction is taking place. So that is why all heterogeneous systems, first imagination is what kind of reactor I am talking. And please remember, when I am talking about a single particle out and then uh, talking about the reaction rate, reaction rate will not change. Actual chemical reaction rate will not change. What will change? Mass transfer will change. Mass transfer in a packed bed is different. Mass transfer in a fluidized bed is different. Mass transfer in moving bed is different. Mass transfer in rotary kiln is different. That is how that controls the rate of reaction. But chemical reaction is same. Chemical reaction, actual chemical part is same. Okay. So that is the beauty again in heterogeneous systems where you have to find out which one is now rate controlling, whether both rate controlling or only one step rate controlling, all that. So that is why I take a fluidized bed, which is also very widely used, right? Very widely used. Then uh, you also have polarized combustors. I don't know whether you have heard of them. Polarized coal combustors. Okay. This polarized coal combustor is simply it is used in uh, Naivali and many power plants. It is a cylindrical uh, column. Big size, maybe two meters or uh, one and a half meters or two meters diameter. So from the top, what you do is you spray powder of coal, coal, you know, pulverized coal. The particle size will be around one mm, 0.5 mm, like that. So actually, they send with gas. They just like a jet. You know, this this uh, particles like like jet. They just introduce. So inside already combustion is going on, steady state combustion. And we are not talking about transient condition before starting, right? Not start up under steady state condition. This will very quickly enter the combustion chamber. Sufficient amount of heat is there, you know. That's why uh, combustion reactions are also autothermal reactions. Once you started this uh, combustion, then it is autothermal. You don't have to do anything. Autothermal means on its own, its combustion is going on. So this uh, very fine dust of coal will just enter and then quickly burn, and burning efficiency, combustion efficiency is very very fast in that. You know what is the problem there? Because uh, uh, when you are sending very very fine particles, combustion efficiency is so strong. So you have 
the ash also melting into solids. That means, temperature control is not there, temperature control. And in combustion, temperature control also sometimes required. Particularly, when you have lot of ash like Indian coals, Indian coals have lot of ash. So, those uh, ash will come together and then they melt and then they form solid rocks, because ash is silica. So, that is why and uh, I have seen one problem in uh, particularly Naiveli. We have a place called Naiveli here. They have Naiveli Lignite Corporation. Okay, that is one of the deposits we have in the country, largest deposits in the country uh, in uh, Naiveli. So, they have been digging for so many years now. And one problem what they told me was that, I also try to do something on that. So, they have this, this uh, ash fusion and it seems that particle size will become half meter, half meter and it will stick to one side of, they, they were using polar acid combustors. Okay, that means, simple tube right? and then um, they spray and they put also a lot of heating, you know, uh, yeah, the water coils inside, because idea is to produce the power. How do you do? In this combustor, you put the water, right? so that will become steam. So, that steam will go to turbine and the turbine is attached to generator, then only we will get all these things here. Right? So, that is why, that is what they were doing there and uh, unfortunately, in that lignite what they have is FeS2. So, this will become now, uh, again uh, that will make the ash to further melt at lower temperatures. In the presence of this FeS2, uh, let us say that this melting temperature of uh, ash is around 900 degrees centigrade. This will bring to around 600, 700 degrees itself and unfortunately, this FeS2 is part of this coal lignite they have to eliminate that. They could not eliminate. I mean, I suggested something, they, it worked well, but I do not know whether actually in practice they are doing or not, we do not know. Yeah. So, then uh, uh, the, the, this uh, big half uh, meter diameter uh, stone after forming, slowly it starts attaching to one uh, side and then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. So, no more that weight it can be held by this, you know, the, that surface attachment, then it will fall. Where does that fall? That falls happily on the tubes, internal tubes, water tubes. So, they break, then our power goes, we will not have power. And it seems to cut that, it is not that easy. I think biggest hexas also you cannot use, um, mission uh, type you know, hexas also you cannot use to cut it seems. They started breaking and then cutting and finally, somehow they remove. That is the problem what they have. So, that is why in all these things you know, that is also because you should know all these different combustors and combustor is a beautiful non-catalytic reaction. So, that is why I can pull the, a particle there also, but the kinetics and what we are going to learn kinetics part is same for any kind of reactor, but only thing is that kg value will change. If it is a fluid acid bed, kg value is different. If it is a, a moving bed, kg value is different, because kg value depends on what is called hydrodynamics. Hydrodynamics means how the phases are moving in the system. In a fluid acid bed, how the phases are moving? Solid will jump up and down like this, like this, like this, anywhere. It is a mixed flow. Particles. Particles can be imagined as mixed flow in a fluid acid bed. Right? So, that is why the definition of mixed flow is this particle can be anywhere, anytime. Right? And even it can come outside also if it is continuously feeding. Anyway, continuously I am feeding, continuously it comes out. Right? But now you see, its mass transfer will be around that particle will be totally different when compared to packet bed where packet bed is just sitting there, particle is just sitting there. Even moving bed, what is the problem? Moving bed, the entire bed, uh, you know, packet bed is slowly moving. It is not very fast moving there in moving bed. So, and then the oxygen is going in the opposite direction, counter current if I take. So, that is why the mass transfer again between gas phase and solid surface is different. Those are the things only different. Same thing, yesterday also I told catalytic reaction, it is same thing again. right? Catalytic reaction, we also thought uh, packed bed, fluidized bed, moving bed, all these beds can be used there also. So, that is what you have to be more careful. Okay. Coal combustion, I just take fluidized bed, F B, gas is coming out this is gas with oxygen and all that. Solids are continuously fed 
and ash is coming continuously <coughs> that is also solid. right? So, now what I do is one particle I will just pull out. right? So, if I pull out and then bring that one here, okay, that same thing if I bring it here. Now, I can imagine I have a not so, you will never have so nice particle because in coal digging and all that you know mining you will never get that kind of particle, but anyway for academic purposes this is the coal particle and around this the gas is moving that also we know. So, we have this kind of gas going around that and the fluid mechanics will tell me that I have a film around that all these things are already known to us film right and then um, through the film oxygen has to enter and out of the film CO2 assuming that only CO2 is the uh, the gaseous product okay that comes out now so uh, and this also i can imagine that i have the solid surface this is carbon okay because the combustion starts only first on the surface right okay then i have here film exaggerated I thought I have to do so many things today. Yeah, good. So, now if I plot oxygen concentration, this is again I can call C A G or C A B whatever. Okay. So, I think uh, I will call C A B like yesterday. Good, that is C A B. Now, on the surface, this is C A S. This is what is the picture, correct? No, I have a particle around the particle oxygen is going not only oxygen other gases are going, but our interesting compound is only oxygen because C O C plus O 2 giving me C O 2 my reactant is O 2. So, that is the reason why we take C O 2 right. Yeah. So, then uh, uh, what is step 1? Empty of O 2 to the surface oh, to the surface through the film correct. Huh? through the film. Good. Yeah. Step 2, reaction or combustion on the surface, reaction on the surface. Step 3, the product gases coming out. Yeah. CO 2 mass transfer of empty of empty of CO 2 through the film. Uh, through the film to the surface, uh, sorry to bulk. <coughs> okay. So, under steady state conditions step 1, step 2, step 3 all 3 are equal. Okay. Good. So, now again as far as kinetics are concerned will step 3 change my rate of reaction. I mean this could have been very good also if the reversible reaction is possible we will also get some carbon out. Okay, C plus O 2 giving me C O 2 if it is reversible reaction C and O 2 again decompose to give O 2 and carbon, but that is not possible that is not a reversible reaction. Okay. So, that is the reason why now you can neglect this because we are neglecting please remember that concept. Okay. What is the concept there? The third step is not really changing our rate of reaction if it is reversible then automatically Swami, okay, the third step is not participating in the rate of reaction. Th that is why it cannot change rate of reaction. So, that is why only these two steps are step 1 and step 2 are step 1 must be equal to step 2, step 2 under steady state conditions. Okay, good. What is step 1 mass transfer through the film? What is the equation now? Okay, minus <coughs> R A B I have written huh? O B I observed or yeah, we have observed rate, we have global rate, we have bulk rate, all that is there. Uh, what did I write? B1. B1. Okay, yeah. So, this is equal to 
in terms of equations so this is kg cab minus cas and again we have an assumption here okay ah what do you mean by taking care Neglecting. Step three is neglected because that is not affecting my rate. Like, uh, what should I do? If, uh, if the CO2 concentration is too much and near the particle, uh, then it can like not let the CO2 to react with the particle. Yeah, but under steady state conditions, whatever is possible only, it is diffusion yeah. of CO2 coming out and the diffusion of O2 going in, right? A balance between those two only will give me what kg. So kg will be affected. That's all. Under steady state conditions, that's why we assume that we have equimolar counter diffusion, or if it's not possible, we have to go for uh, multi-component diffusion. Okay. So that is why under steady state conditions, I have a kg. And how do you get kg? Anyway, that I will come to that later. How do you get kg? Okay. Yeah. So then kg. Yeah. Th that is the reason why it is not affecting, right? But in the diffusion wise. You will have some dynamic equilibrium between CO2 coming out and O2 going in, and that results in some kind of diffusion. And you know the relationship between kg and diffusion coefficient? Film theory. In film theory, we are talking about what? Proportional to? In film theory. So what is the proportionality comes? K. What K? You are again kg. <laughs> Diffusivity kg is proportional to d or till what? Another K you are talking? Not even one know about this. Ah. Uh -huh. huh? Yeah. Excellent. What delta? Delta thickness of the Yeah. You know diffusivity by delta equal to kg under Simple film theory. Oh my God! How many? Three courses of mass transfer. Two courses of CRE. Hundred courses of fluid mechanics. I think. Ah, yeah. This is simple. I say delta. You know, DIB by delta, where delta is the thickness of the film. And why we are not measuring that? Because no one can measure the thickness of film. So that is why kg is an empirical equation. You measure. It is an experimental based equation. That is why you have many correlations for kg in terms of which number? Sherwood number. Sherwood number equal to kg d by dab. The, the, the diffusivity coefficient there, because you are converting that in terms of dimensionless quantity. That is why the dab comes there. Okay. So that is why kg is in terms of most of the time correlations. The reason is the theoretically. One theory, film theory tells me that DAB by delta equal to kg, and you also have other theories. In penetration theory only, I think it comes as square root. Yeah. So in some other theories are there, it will come to you know three point two or another point. Yeah, point six and many things are there. Ah, surface renewal theory is you know these three only we know, but there are combinations of surface theory and the penetration theory together. Okay, there are many. It's so some four five theories, but these three are famous. What is that? Film theory, penetration theory, and surface renewal theory. Okay, and you know surface renewal theory. Who proposed? Dan Coates. Dan Coates. Okay. Yeah, and who proposed uh, penetration theory? Egbe. Name itself is Egbe's penetration theory. Okay. Who proposed film theory? The first one. Who said Louis? Louis. Ah, Louis and Whitman. Louis and Whitman, these two. These are all our grandfathers. I say you should not forget them. You should not forget them. I think the moment you come to IIT or engineering, as you forget all the people except maybe nearest people are parents. Okay. So that's why I think you know this information also is required, and that's what I am trying to do, and I am losing time. But uh, if you know all this, I think you know I should have given freedom. <laughs> okay, but uh, because all these things are not known, so I have to tell. Otherwise, you know, even after this course, I don't know. If you want to remember, you can. But if you want to forget, you can always forget. Okay. But as chemical engineers, these are the basic things you have to remember. So this is the one, and then now I am assuming that I have K into 
and it is not required only to have here k into C A S. It can be square, it can be cubed, it can be another crazy equation divided by another constant plus C A S square, but procedure is same, approach is same. What is the approach? First identify what is the reactor, pull out one particle, write all steps right? and then try to eliminate mathematical steps like that. So, then try to eliminate indeterminate concentrations which you cannot measure so easily, but bulk concentration can be used easily. So, that is why we call that as rate based on bulk, okay? global rate, overall rate. Overall means mass transfer is affecting, reaction is affecting, what is the overall rate? That is why the name overall rate. Global rate means there are many things happening, but at global level what is the rate? Bulk rate means bring everything to bulk uh, conditions, temperature and pressure that means concentration and temperature. So, then call that as bulk rate, all these names are existing. right? Okay, good. So, now this equation you are already masters, exactly same equation only what you have derived in the last class. So, that is why the final rate I will write here C A B by 1 by K G plus 1 by K. Yeah. Now, I will ask you to extend your imagination a little bit further. Is it exactly same or in this equation there will be something which I have to take care of? It is not that easy to for your imagination, but still nothing so many. So, nothing is uh, impossible for the imagination, right? but you tell me and you have to justify why you are imagining that. This, you know this is exactly same equation what you get for catalytic reaction. Right? But is there any actual difference between this and that? Something, something which you can do, which you have to take into account. That means you should now understand, that is what I have been telling all the time. You have to understand the basics of combustion. What is the phenomena? Why always increasing? The surface area of the particle is increasing. Yeah. So, surface area is decreasing, case increase. Film is here, film nothing is happening. In this case, K is always high. No, because temperature is high, you cannot say mass transfer is high. Reaction only, we can tell it is very high. Huh? Ash, 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 ah, so, accelerations, what do you do? Yeah, that is what. The difference between this reaction and the catalytic reaction is. In catalytic reaction, the particle has constant size. size. It won't change with time. Whereas with the time, this fellow changes. Okay, so this fellow changes, and then you have to write Kg as a function of dP, and dP goes from certain finite value to zero. It disappears totally at the end. How do you take care of this? This can be beautifully taken care of. Uh, you know in non catalytic reaction sinking core model and all that that comes in the next semester so beautiful that non catalytic reactor design okay so that is the difference because otherwise it is exactly same and how do you calculate mass transfer correlations uh, the, the, the kg value do you have a correlation if i have i told you mass transfer changes from reactor to reactor because hydrodynamics change from reactor to reactor i will give you the simplest case any reactor you have one single particle hanging and then equations are available and uh, you have around this some gas going. Can I now calculate what is the mass transfer coefficient in this case? It is also one of the pet questions in uh, gate. Single particle mass transfer. How do I calculate? No, sorry. It is a single particle. Do you have a mass transfer correlation okay, from single particle that is from gas to particle or particle to gas? Both are same. Have you not done a problem with the naphthalene balls? You have done it, but the only thing is you are you have PhD in forgetting. Excellent! You know how many ways you can forget. But I think what we uh, expect you as teachers is you should have PhD in remembering. In how many ways you can remember once it is told. I told you know one way of remembering. I I do that magnetic uh, what is that uh, hematite and magnetite. I told you know one simple thing, H comes first hematite, so Fe 2 O 3. So, like that some thing and also you have hydrophobic and hydrophilic, 
again these words i think how do you remember you know hydrophobic fo fo <laughs> okay yeah so that's why i say okay hydrophobic don't like uh, you know water right hydrophilic means happy like so that is why once i know the other one can i, I can imagine because it is only two things no so like that you have to remember you know you should have phd in that in how many ways you can remember but now you are experts in the other one in how many ways you can forget okay somehow i should not remember this aspect at all okay you have done that some i think many it is a favorite question also for many mass transfer teachers sherwood number equal to 2 okay so is it uh, always or there is some special case ha huh? spherical is okay yeah spherical is one but under what ha ah, you have to tell the condition under what conditions this is simple diffusion i have told you know with a lot of thing and then stay at the thing no convection at all when you have no convection that means velocity equal to 0 convective velocity then you have sherwood number equal to 2 this is what i told this is a gate favorite question okay so that means prove that sherwood number equal to 2 for a single particle uh, without any uh, convection equal to 0 right i may also give because reaction engineering cannot survive without mass transfer mass transfer also must be there in homogeneous you may not see right okay so plus something else is there when you have convection 0.5 reynolds number to the power 0.5 no not 0.6 and schmidt to the power of 0.33 1 by 3 what is 6 oh this one is 6 huh? this is 0.6 huh? okay <coughs> yeah you know what is the name of this correlation another grandfather another two grandfathers another three grandfathers in fact huh excellent how do you know this yes gopinath is trying to catch that is it okay ranjan marshal that's right and you know another name for this which is in third chapter of uh, table third chapter now if you go your exponents may be slightly different but it's same almost frostling equation frostling that's why i said we have three grandfathers okay so that is the frostling equation so this is what what one equation you use so if i want to calculate this for single particle just single particle okay mass transfer do you have similar equation for heat transfer exactly you have same equation similar equation for heat transfer but only thing this is no salt this cannot be prandtl that is reynolds again because reynolds number comes because of the flow okay so that convection must be there and whereas this is prandtl number now you remember you know how many ways to remember that's why i told you this there are so many ways to remember don't be experts in so many ways to forget forgetting okay good so this is the equation you can see as reynolds number is decreasing you know dp is changing size it is slowly disappearing so then you can also calculate what will be the corresponding kg value and that we have to take care of somehow inside the one and i will tell you in the next semester how to take care of that in the in the actual design so now i think idea here is again to have this equation has heterogeneous system where kg is very important parameter very quickly now you are experts so now we have many many systems like uh, i have taken only gas solid right we can take gas liquid system what do you call gas liquid systems what kind of reactor you use for gas liquid yeah so me gas liquid no what kind of systems you use systems means equipment i cannot say reactor because there may be reaction or no reaction Ah, oh, distillation column is one. Okay, yeah, right, right. Absorption. He also told absorption. absorption. Yeah, absorption. Yeah, anything else? Bubbling. Yeah, bubbles, yeah. bubbling columns, bubble columns, bubble columns. Bubble columns. Bubble columns. Then uh, you can also have simple tank and bubble gas, hmm. and you can also have very tall column and bubble gas. Yeah. Which one you spray? Liquid spray and gas. Then you don't get bubbles. Gas. Gas. Liquid gas. Yeah. Yeah, but I think you are sending liquid in the form of droplets, and gas is going. The contact is totally different. 
what we are uh, talking here is i have liquid continuous and gas is bubbling then only you call bubble beds okay bubbling beds or uh, bubble columns right we have all that and uh, now uh, yeah you have also liquid liquid reactions or liquid liquid extractors all liquid liquid extractors also can be used as reactors what is the difference i have one liquid continuous another liquid dispersed now how the reaction should take place same again that's why that imagination is very important just imagine how a droplet is moving in continuous liquid if you don't know you go home and take uh, kerosene uh, uh, one or two droplets and then put into water how they move right and you know definitely bubbles how they move because that is what many times we do we see If wherever you go nowadays soda when you take or uh, what cool drinks if you take okay then how the bubbles are coming that we know right so there also i will take one droplet around the droplet i have liquid moving because one is continuous fluid is eh? the other one is uh, dispersal fluid even bubble column bubble is moving liquid is again coming whether it is co current direction or counter current direction so bubble is moving and if i sit on the bubble i know that bubble is moving i can't see i can see only liquid is moving around me. that is also with respect to which coordinate your coordinate okay that's why you have lagrangian uh, coordinates oil and coordinates only for that you see how many things you have to learn now right so that is why procedure is same take one droplet and uh, see what is the liquid flowing around and again film interface between these two where is the reaction has to actually taking place if you have this droplets dissolving in uh, the other liquid and then reacting with the bulk that is one thing the other thing is if this liquid is able to get transferred on the surface and the reaction is taking place on the surface and again diffusion of these molecules may also go into the droplets yeah droplets with respect to what so that is why you have to understand the physical properties of both the liquids gas and bubble what will happen in gas and bubble sorry i mean gas bubble and liquid bubble is moving up right again liquid is flowing around that so i have a bubble liquid so now imagination easily for this is liquid liquid is slightly difficult imagination he is normally this gas will first dissolve in the liquid in the uh, liquid then the reaction may take place but before it dissolving it has to pass through two films one is within the bulb within the bubble other one is outside liquid film that's what in absorption you said in absorption that is the two film theory right in in absorption i have the gas bubble it is getting absorbed in the liquid so but but what is the imagination i have the bubble outside i have a film because fluid mechanics tells me whenever i have two phases i will have film how strong how small and all that is later depending on the conditions and inside also i have a film right so then the gas has to first pass through the gas film inside the bubble touch the interface from interface to again through the liquid film to the bulk that is why i now take slurry reactor slurry reactor is a three film i mean a three phase reactor so we will see these things there so again slurry reactor is easy to imagine normally we will have distributor here gas distributor gas comes out you have the catalyst particles because it is a slurry reactor catalytic reactor then you have the bubbles sometimes you will get very nice bubbles sometimes you will get this kind of bubbles and this bubble exploded yeah so this kind of bubbles are moving so here i have inside liquid yeah inside liquid okay good so now again here <coughs> i have to find out the rate of reaction what is the procedure now we have three phases earlier i have two phases and then pulled out solid phase and gas now i have three phases so i have to now see there is one bubble and then there is one solid particle in between definitely there will be 
liquid. So, you just pull out this imagination. One gas bubble, ah, okay, I have to also write here, this is catalyst, this is bubble and this is liquid. Those are the three phases, right. But here what you are taking is, bubble is, gas is continuously bubbled, the other two are in batch, batch condition. Liquid also in batch, I will take only certain amount and then leave it there. I, if I want to make, I can also make liquid continuous. If I want to make solid also, solid continuous also I can make. You see how many possibilities for one reactor. Simplest possibility is, bubble you cannot take gas, okay. Gas, sorry, no, not <laughs> like batch, yeah. Bubble you, I mean, uh, uh, gas you cannot take as batch. So, that is why it is continuously bubbled. So, now, what is the imagination? I have the bubble, you see, imagination how bigger. This is the liquid film, this is the gas film, somewhere here I have solid particle, okay, that is catalyst. And here also it tells me that I have film, right. So, in between what I have? Liquid, okay, liquid. Now, where the reaction is actually taking place, see that is why that imagination, that uh, process, what is really happening, the phenomena, phenomena that is what physics we say, that phenomena is very important. What is the phenomena now I have to imagine here? Yes, I have the gas bubble. This gas bubble has to first come and dissolve in liquid. Let us say that the gas bubble has reactant A, uh, reaction may be this is A going to R. Okay, simplest one, you know, so for easy imagination. So, now this A has to come out of the bubble. So, when it is coming, it has to, it has to go through the film. This is a gas film and this is liquid film. Okay. Then, this is catalyst and this is liquid film liquid film. What is my imagination now? You should first have the gas which is coming out and then touching the interface. There, depending on its solubility, it will dissolve in the liquid and then that liquid, when it is dissolved, throughout you have A in this liquid. Now, that liquid, in that liquid, this A has to be transported to the surface and on this surface, you have the reaction taking place if it is non-porous particle. If it is porous, porous particle, again that liquid will uh, diffuse with that A and A will get reacted inside the surface. So, now what are the steps? So, yeah, before steps I will also draw the profiles. So, this is one profile, okay. this is one profile, this is one profile, okay. this is the center. Okay. So, now you should have this is, okay. so in the bubble inside, because it is gas everywhere, so, I may have the bubble concentration as A B, which is uniform throughout, but in this film, I will have some drop in the concentration. So, I may have like this, this is C A, uh, C A, okay. I will also write here C A G to be specific, C A G, this is C A G I, this concentration. Now, you have the Henry's law here, because whenever gas is dissolving, okay, in that the interface, you have this Henry's law acting and that Henry's law will tell me that I have this is C A G I equal to H into C A I L liquid. So, depending on the H value, you will have either starting above, below or equal, equal when H equal to 1. right? and above below you can imagine. So, now this is C A I, no, no, C A, now it has become liquid concentration. So, C A L I, so this concentration here at this point is, uh, okay, I will write here, C A L I, that means at the interface, that the, this is what is the interface, interface between bubble and, yeah, gas and liquid. So, this is liquid. 
right okay so then i will also have next a liquid film yeah from here this will again go to some concentration which is cal assumption here is that this l is almost cal is almost constant why because we are putting a mixer or uh, even if you don't put put a mixer you have the bubbles vigorously moving so then you will have good mixing so gas will uniformly distribute and throughout this liquid you will have uniform concentration that's why th that constant so afterwards again here you have this is cal again same thing then you have another concentration this is equal to ca yes if it is porous particle we will stop here if it is non porous particle again you will have a concentration drop within the particle because of the diffusion of a through the pores that is nicely taken care by effective inspector okay good so now i have now how many steps what is step 1 i think i have sufficient time now for Two minutes, sir. Huh? Oh my God! Now again, I have to draw tomorrow all this. Sir. Okay, we have, do we have to stop here. Oh yeah, okay. I think yeah. Good. Now step one, step two, step three. What are the step? What is step one? For example, see for the reaction to take place, how this A fellow has to travel. That's what what you have to imagine. Reaction is taking place in the catalyst on the surface of the catalyst. For the A for A to teach to, to reach that surface, what are the steps now? Step one is. empty of a through gas film to interface correct now that is here step 2 again mass transfer of a through liquid film through liquid film now to where bulk very good so step 3 is mixing of a in bulk liquid mixing of a in bulk liquid you know that also a step that can also if it is not infinity then we have to take that into account because if it is infinity we may neglect because concentration is uniform okay good so now step 4 again mass transfer of a through liquid film yeah to yeah catalyst surface then you have step 5 yeah reaction on the surface reaction on the so reaction on the surface because of quick writing only this happening okay so now at steady state 1 2 3 4 5 all steps are equal now you have also sixth step if it is a porous particle that means fifth will be again diffusion of a through the pores of the catalyst then reaction inside the surface of the catalyst now procedure is same i have to write mass transfer equation through film mass transfer equation through Uh, liquid film and um, because this is not offering any resistance so we don't have to yeah again who asked swami yeah, or someone asked me no yeah this step can be neglected now because it is not changing my rate why cb cab is constant throughout right so then i have to take this step this step now another mass transfer step through the liquid film around the catalyst then rate of reaction under steady state conditions this equal to this equal to this equal to this how many mass transfer steps are there Oh, oh, three, three, three. Three. I mean, if you take even mixing, if you, sometimes if mixing is not very good, inside this also you will have concentration gradient. It is not uniform. So you see, in fact, in a heterogeneous reactions, there are more mass transfer steps than reaction steps. That is what is the beauty in heterogeneous system. And again, yeah, okay. Again, we have to take whatever is. controlling and all that we have to do that we will do tomorrow controlling i don't do i will just only develop one equation and then tell you okay so that again we will do in ccre in fact ccre will be more exciting than this
okay because uh, you know all applications whatever you learnt now these are all fundamentals basis so there i think all, all those things are applications